So Stuart Hampson is one of those guys that people go to for advice. Prince Charles and Gordon Brown among them. However, when I met him, there was only one area of focus. His 14-year stint as the head of the UK's favourite retailer, the John Lewis Partnership, an organisation with a reputation envied across the world. During his time there, Stuart presided over a huge modernisation programme. The result? The best financial performance in the business's 150-year history, culminating with John Lewis and Waitrose, the two brands in JLP, being voted as number one and number two at the Retail Customer Service Awards. But in my view, the only way you can get that kind of enduring success is to build a basis on relationships and not on transactions. You're looking at relationships with your customers, relationships with your staff, relationships with your suppliers and relationships with the community where you're based. That is how you build a long-term success and the kind of reputation you're referring to. The values are things that people recognise uh, are, are consistent. The, the integrity, the honesty, that emphasis on never knowingly undersold, all those things don't change. But the way the service is delivered has constantly adapted. We don't stand around in huddles over every single decision. Uh, it's got to be a fast-moving business where the leadership of the business leads, takes the big decisions, takes the initiatives, but it does so in an environment where it's ready to answer to the partners afterwards and say, this is why we did it. Because unless we move swiftly, unless we had managers who were capable of taking those, those decisions, we wouldn't survive in this very competitive world of retailing. So don't imagine it is all about saying, well, we'll stand around until everybody's satisfied. There will be losers, there'll be difficult decisions. Frequently people ask me, how do you train your staff to deliver this sort of service? And I bluntly say, we don't train them. We let them be themselves. Because I really believe if you're dependent on training manuals and formulaic responses, customers aren't really impressed by that. What they're impressed by is when people are themselves, they look as though they're on the side of the customer. They're really listening to what the customer wants. And if we can give an example, again, a customer wrote to me, she was an American lady, uh, uh, went into Peter Jones, uh, wanted a washing machine and went up to the sales system and said, uh, I want a Mealy washing machine. And the guy started showing her the Mealy washing machine. He said, now, just a minute, why did you want a Mealy? And she said, well, it's the best. And he said, yeah, sure, it's the best, but where are you going to put it? Is it in your kitchen or have you got it in a utility room? And she said, well, it's actually in a utility room. He said, well, you don't need the mealy. The mealy is fantastic. It's really quiet. And if it's going to be somewhere where you're going to be working or eating, um, then it's worth having it. But if it's in another room, why don't you get this other one, which is exactly the same internal works, but it's a bit noisier, and it's a couple of hundred pounds cheaper. And this American lady said to me, I have never had somebody say to me, why don't you buy something that's 200 pounds cheaper? She said, from now on, I'm going to do all my shopping at Peter Jones. Now that's letting that sales assist assistant be himself, listen to the customer, discuss what the customer wanted, not working on commission, so he wasn't out for the biggest sale that he could get on that day, but he'd developed a relationship. That word I used earlier, mm -hmm. developing a relationship with customers rather than focusing on the transaction so that they come back time and again they become ambassadors for John Lewis and Waitrose. They, they, they themselves feel passionate about the business. What we say is recruit for attitude, train for skills. If you bring in somebody who's got the right attitude, you can always give them the, the additional skills, product knowledge afterwards. But if you bring somebody in who knows product knowledge, but doesn't have that ability to relate to a customer and to smile at the customer, to share a little joke with the customer, then the, the store won't have the right feeling. It won't feel like a John Lewis. So recruit for attitude, train for skills is absolutely fundamental. I often talk about the word pride, uh, and it's pride is a um, fairly unfashionable term uh, nowadays, but if people have got pride in what they do, and feel they're delivering good level of service and pride, this is my shop, I'm part of it. I tell my friends in the evening, I work in that spec safe, and they say, oh yeah, I've been in that, it's jolly good. Then 
that, give, that adds a great deal to the pleasure they get from doing work. And if you can get that sense of pride, then people will say, I'm not going to say, not for me to do that job. If they see uh, more customers than we were expecting, everybody will come out and pull together.